I just wanted to pause the conversation that we're going to have about the federal immigration scene and introduce my own senator uh, representing East LA um, in Assembly uh, Senate District 24. Um, uh, senator Durazo, I believe, is in transit and joining us by phone. Um, hi, Senator. Hi, thank you so much. Sorry for uh, these uh, technology things that don't always work. But yes, I pulled on the side of the road and can't get into Zoom, so calling in. Thank you, everybody. Um, Senator Durazo, um, I'm going to just quickly sort of re make sure people have a sense of how the afternoon looks, and then I'm going to pivot to you, if that's OK. So just give me one minute. Yes. Um, sure. So the afternoon sessions are going to be on this channel. Um, Please just keep it on um, and, 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 and continue to share your thoughts in the chat um, and, and share any questions that you might have through the afternoon. We're screening our film coverage, which is about the importance of um, ensuring that everyone, regardless of, of status, has access to health care and health insurance through an expansion of Medi-Cal. That'll be at three o'clock on our CYA platform. If you have any questions or are interested in that, just let us know in the chat. Um, and we will make sure that you have the information that you need. Um, by way of introduction of both this conversation and um, uh, what uh, is, is sort of um, so relevant at the moment in thinking about um, the federal immigration scene in the state, you know, the current moment has really laid bare um, the, the fracture in our system um, and overwhelmingly immigrant communities are excluded. Um, while we ensure that the economy is functioning during a global pandemic, um, everything from immediate uh, federal relief um, to, to even all of the things that the state might offer, sometimes uh, 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 immigrant communities are often only um, in, uh, allowed to access some of that. Often they're excluded from all of it. Um, I wanted to bring Senator DeRazo in before we move to the meat of discussion um, with Karen and myself. Um, because I don't think we have the senator for the whole hour. Senator Zrazo, it would be great to hear from you um, if you're still on the line with us. Sure, sure. And thanks. And sorry, trying to get as quiet a place as possible. But, um, the, you know, I was on, on Saturday, I was at a food distribution in the Pico Union Westlake area. Oh, is that, it's not too loud? It's you okay. Yeah, we can hear you. You're okay. all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we were distributing food and, and it hit me that although I had been on another distribution line, the looks on the faces of this, these communities was very different. There was a, a there was a sense of enormous anxiety. Um, enormous sadness and just almost hopelessness. Um, and as I walked down the line just to have conversations with folks um, in, a, in a short, like out of, in a line of like seven people that I talked to, um, four of the seven told me that they were being either evicted with a notice or they were being threatened with evictions, personal, you know, personally being threatened and told face to face and that they didn't care about anything else. So, so that plus this, um, you know, just getting food for a meal is what is going on, especially not just in communities of color, but especially in immigrant communities that um, just hit me really, really hard. So I mean, said that I'm sorry, I, I, I meant to just start out by, you know, hoping, hope everyone is, is safe for you and your families and colleagues. Uh, I know you worked really, really hard before this, and especially now during the pandemic. Um, we know the numbers. We know that there, nobody has to, you know, remind us of the essential role that we've always played. And you know, whether it's nationally, 15% of workers are statewide. You know, one third of California's workers are LA County. 45%. These numbers, you know, should represent good things for our community, but, and there's always strength in numbers, but in fact, when it comes to lack of health care, uh, we're high numbers, disproportionate, and I appreciate 
uh, the support around uh, SB 29 and the health for all. Um, because of this pandemic should not be the reason that undocumented seniors over 65 are deprived of Medi-Cal. That, that is outrageous to use this as a reason to deprive instead of seeing this as a time that makes it even more urgent for undocumented, especially 65 and over. We don't have those good paying jobs. We don't have the affordable housing you know, the loss of jobs, I read a study about 70% uh, the jobs in our communities are 70% at risk of losing, of uh, becoming unemployed. Whereas in other communities, it's 30 to 40% max. I mean, you know, anyway, we should not be selective about who gets a safety net, who gets health care. Um, my, one of my other bills that I also thank you for is uh, domestic workers, SB 1257, you know, um, making sure that they have access to health um, protections uh, with OSHA. Again, this is a public health care crisis. And if our response is to be to deprive workers of the basic protections, then how in the world are we going to get out of this public health care crisis? The arguments don't make sense. The only thing that happens is they get fearful, there's racism, um, and it's up to us to really, uh, you know, uh, give a whole different perspective. You know, they're not doing us a favor. We don't want charity. We want to be treated just like everybody else. If we pay into the system, just like everybody else, we want to be able to get out of the system. You know, if we pay for unemployment and the employers pay for unemployment, then then um, immigrants should get the unemployment. So there's um, there's a, a, a mindset here that has to be challenged. It has to be broken. That mold has to be broken. And I know no other way than to um, working with you all and uh, to be strong partners in, in pushing the right narrative um, and the right solutions for this. So. Thank you all very much. I, I appreciate your, um, you know, your partnership and camaraderie, uh, especially during these hard times.